Good evening people, my lovely people. I hope all of you are doing well, happy and healthy. Um, so today I came with a very special video. I have, I've been really wanting to do that forever. Ever since I got pregnant, I wanted to do that uh, because I wasn't really sure how would the delivery be and how would the whole you know labor and delivery experience would be. But I was thinking if it's very, um, not very, but if it's positive enough, I would share it with people. I did not want to share anything negative and scare the ladies because I know how much they ask questions. Uh, how was your experience? How did they go? And I feel like there's a lot of trauma and a lot of negativity attached to it. So I already decided that if I had a um, negative experience, I would not share it. I would just say it was hard, but thank God I was lucky or I tried to, I actually, I would say I intentionally tried to make everything in a way that it would turn out to be positive too. Other than that, I got lucky. And, um, but I think, um, so if you guys are doing hypnobirthing and other um, techniques um, so before I even go into my story I wanted to say that it is a positive positive story so you guys can stay um, the reason I wanted to say that in the beginning um, because I think a lot of people who are doing hypnobirthing and other similar techniques they don't want to hear any negative thing because you are doing positive affirmations and you do not want to hear negative stories guys that's the last thing you want to do um, even though I was very very tempted and curious to know some hard stories as well but to be honest i avoided as much as i could during my whole nine months i did not go and ask people consciously hey tell me your negative story or anything if something came across i i kind of brushed it off because i just wanted to have like a positive things attached to it so my mindset is um you know on a correct path that's what i thought is very very important um other than having a you know peaceful mind and you know good nutrition I think that that's really impacts um, having a very positive mindset re regarding your delivery. Um, so yeah, starting from the day I got pregnant, I already knew um, when I missed my period because I never miss my period. My periods are always on time, so I knew the day, the number, uh, the day, uh, the day, the first day I missed my period. I knew I am pregnant. Um, the it's funny because i had no symptoms at all during my whole nine months other than that i think first week first six weeks i felt like maybe a little um i don't know not nauseous not tired but just a little different little um i don't know how to say it but it wasn't like anything that i can say i'm physically feeling like tired or physically but it's just weird you know how when you have like um, cold or something and it's gone and you're kind of still feeling a little bit weak i would say that's the closest i can define that but that's about it so my whole ninth months were like absolutely you can say symptomless pregnancy i'm not sure if it's very common for first time mothers but i would say for me uh, i was thank god it was very uh, good experience uh, overall and I know like I've been reading crazy I if you guys don't by the way if you guys don't have an app called peanut please please download that you can get tons of information from there however disclaimer there are a lot of people who share negative stories as well obviously because everybody have everybody has a right to share their story but avoid their negative stories or negative experiences because you are trying to have a positive uh, story for yourself so you do not want to form any thoughts in your head so avoid that but other than that it will give you a lot of information coming back i was not concerned about giving birth i was not concerned about anything else guys i have like sometimes very terrible period cramps i mean somebody who has terrible period cramps would say okay, delivery the labor pains are going to be harder than that but i just wasn't concerned about at all about the labor pains i don't know why but i guess i was too positive uh i mean it's good to be very positive uh, with this whole experience but have very open mindset that you can have um, basically any outcome other than the desired outcome so be very mindful about that too but I was like in la 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 land I was very positive happy go lucky and, you know I was like nah nothing gonna happen to me um, every woman does that that was my main I guess motivation wait my mother did it um, her mother did it so I can do it too so that was my main I guess motivation uh, but I would say oh, hold a second recording yeah so yeah so i did not feel any symptoms anything during my whole pregnancy at all um including the braxton hicks and i i know like a lot of this first time mothers do feel braxton hicks but 
I don't know. I did not feel no Braxton Hicks, no nothing. Like I felt nothing in the last um, couple of weeks either. So, and I know that doctor was talking about induction. Hey, if things do not go, because I told her I am not feeling anything in the last appointment. I told her she's like, oh, I think we should schedule induction. I was like, uh, uh, I'm not doing inductions because induction does lead to a lot of time to c-sections because you are putting so much trauma to your body your body is not ready and then ready and you're putting trauma to it trying to you know force the baby to come out on time but i was like i'm not doing that i will make a separate video on that how you guys can avoid that like literally um so the thing is okay coming back to the story um so my due date was october 28 and the thing that everybody's telling okay first time mothers can get even a week late so i wasn't even concerned i didn't even you know care if a baby's coming on october 28 or not so anyway but for some reason the night before i was keeping everything ready i was making my bag ready i was uh, you know hopping on the ball uh birthing ball way more and then i i was like just mentally prepared for some reason i don't know it was just i would just magical how my mind was prepared um and then I went to, uh, yeah, Errol, my husband, he said like, oh, why don't you go take a shower? It will, you know, be more relaxing. And when you are, you know, when your brain brain is very relaxing, you will, you know, release oxytocin and that's when your your labor would start. But I was like, hmm, that that was like, you know, click to me. And I went to shower and I took like an like hour long shower. Just make sure if you go in a shower, make sure it's not very hot because it's not good for the baby. Um, and then after the shower, I'm in the slept. I think around 4, 4 a.m. in the morning, I woke up to go bathroom as usual, you know, at night time. I, I was going, okay, during my whole last couple of weeks, I was going for a pee like two times a night. Um, that's that's about it. Other than that, like in daytime, I was okay. Like, I know they, I heard a lot of stories that you pee a lot more, but I wasn't, I was not. 4 a.m. And then I noticed, hmm, something's there. And I noticed a um, little bit, very little bloody show they call it bloody show but it was just guys this much uh blood that's about it and very it's just like mucus like thingy and it just looks like red and, uh you know when you don't have periods for nine months you don't want to deal with any more blood <laughs> so i saw like very little blood and boom i knew that it has started and i knew that today i will be in labor and i knew that today i will be delivering so october 28 um I went uh, I went back to my you know I went to bed and slept again sleep again after eating dates yes I will make a separate video on that too but I tell you I ate a lot of dates and I did have um, the red la uh, raspberry leaf tea is that what you call it yeah I wasn't really sure because I still want to do more research on it but I wasn't sure everybody was saying they did it so I was like there's no harm in it this it's all herbs so I, I just took it like one so I started 38 a week 38 I'm not sure if it's too late or too um, but I was just taking like a cup one cup a night anyways so I woke up took four dates that's a lot of sugar with one cup of milk around 12 noon I woke up again with very light cramping but anyways I called my mom and said told her I will be going to hospital today you don't need to come don't worry I know if she's gonna come she'll just be worried about me all the time so I told her do not come stay home um, we'll be going straight to hospital from here basically started feeling cramping and I downloaded the app forgot the name of the app but it's very common everybody that's the app I think everybody using it uh, for your contractions um, um, so I anyways the I think around noon I started counting my contractions and they were coming like three minutes apart um because the the rule is five four one or something if your contractions are five minutes apart and lasting at least one minute you go to hospital then and they're coming at least an hour um i'm not sure if i'm saying this correctly but something like that anyways the contractions are coming three minutes apart i just ignore it i think around and then whole day you know um co contractions would keep coming light more light little bit little bit lighter little bit faster i just kept you know ke uh, keeping the track of them and i think in between they were little sometimes 10 minutes apart too i guess you get break it's naturally your body's trying to give you a break um 
they're called resting contraction or something like that there's a word for it anyways um so by 3 p.m i started feeling woke now they're they're getting there that time i could not obviously eat anything um I, it was just something where i can talk but i want to be quiet and let the contraction pass through so i knew i'm getting there so by 4 p.m i was like oh they it, it's getting there you know it's hurt it's hurting in a way that i cannot uh sit now like i had to be on my fours all fours you know how you guys do um cat and cow pose i was either in that pose or i was resting on the table behind me so i was resting on my elbows on there and like my head like that and that helped me a lot do not guys sit or lie down when you have contractions trust trust me i did that and i was feeling worse so i came to here and then in the meantime i was on my birthing ball as well while the contractions were not there um, when the contraction came i'll walk to the dresser and do this and that kind of like putting pressure down instead of instead of on my back um so that's uh and then by 4 30 something i was like let's go errol already had the car seat ready um and everything ready the, in the morning he was running he was like i know baby coming so he went to put car seat in everything nicely and then uh my bag was ready night before i did everything last moment literally my bag i packed last night because i don't know there was just intuition that okay i'm gonna go to labor tomorrow i just had a feeling uh even though i was not even like you know eagerly looking forward to it exactly on the same date because i was thinking i'm first time mom it's not gonna happen but somehow the night before i knew it's gonna happen i don't know how i guess your body kind of signals you uh anyway so by 4 30 we left for hospital like literally i was not getting any break when i was sitting in the car i literally had to clench my fist and i was pushing errol's hand like you know and then i was holding the you know handle in one side and i was like when the contraction was coming i was like that um and the hospital is like an hour away i changed my gown and then i was registered for natural birth center because i was lower lowest pregnancy and i was going to go all unmedicated and a natural in natural birth center um so she right away uh checked my cervix because whole pregnancy i did not let them do any kind of intervention including cervix checks yes you can deny them i was like if things going well i don't want any Oh, I think she's waking up. So, and she told me I'm four centimeter already dilated. And uh, she said, do you want to go in the birthing center now? I was like, that was a moment I wish I would have said yes, because, but I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. Okay. At that moment, I knew like right now I can do it, but I wasn't really sure how would it be when I'm like eight centimeter dilated or anything. So I was like, I will stay here. I'm not in a condition to walk uh neither i feel like sitting down and i avoided taking uh epidural until i it was really unbearable i think by five centimeter dilated i said okay give me the lowest dose dose so this is something is not what i planned but and it anyway i ended up doing it um after that obviously i was feeling fine even though i was feeling everything my legs were not numb or my back wasn't look i guess my back was numb so that's why i wasn't feeling contractions but everything else i was feeling absolutely fine after that i was just pretty much resting they came checked baby's heartbeat everything was well um and she was very active uh in the last moment her um you know her heartbeat did not drop which is another you know plus thank god um so basically they put a thingy on her head to measure her heartbeat because um she was moving moving so much that the monitor could not uh, you know capture her heartbeat continuously so after that i uh, think by 12 55 they told me to start pushing i was 10 centimeter dilated and i started pushing i told them to put me a little higher up i do not like to do that on my back that's the most unnatural position so doctors respected that and she put me a little bit up um if i wasn't on epidural i would be doing all my all fours and this is my plan is for my next uh labor hopefully uh so you know so because with uh, epidural unfortunately they do not allow you to move even though i was feeling my legs absolutely fine but they don't allow that um and yeah i think i 15 to 20 minutes i pushed and she came out um i would say it was very, pretty pretty straightforward easy peasy uh delivery afterwards 
but i wish i would have known how is it without epidural um the only thing i did not like is lying down on the bed i wanted to be able to oh just a second she is crying oh. i just went inside to take her she was crying so yeah where was i yeah i was just telling it took about 15 to 20 minutes to push um good three four pushes first two times i did not know how to push. it was about three to four good pushes um first one or two pushes i had no idea how to push um because i'm not feeling contraction that much but i'm feeling very good pressure um so doctor told me hey push now and the nurses the two nurses were standing on the side hey push now i was like i'm not doing that because it wasn't making sense to me um so i told her i would push when i feel like pushing um i know they want to coach you they want to guide you but go with your feeling guys if you are not feel like pushing do not push you will get bad tear i only got on surface uh, uh second degree tear and that was healed very quickly thank god um otherwise i heard it can be very bad um like within two weeks my tear was healed and anyways coming back to the topic uh I said I'm not going to push until um I feel like pushing it. So when the when I felt like so much pressure right on my perineum, I think that's when I started pushing. I mean, you I don't know how to explain, but you will know. Like, you know, it's like when you have to go you know, pooping, you will know you have to poop. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to like control it. I'm going to keep it inside. You will know and then you will go bathroom. It's not like uh 2 hours before you're going to go bathroom. So anyways, when i had so much pressure on my um perineum area and then i started pushing and one two time i did not push even the doctor was like oh you did not push it right i was like yes because i know she's not coming yet so i let it back i slide let her slide back in that way you are making your birth canal a little bit more i guess used to it so i was like uh uh-uh, i'm not pushing if she's not coming out but when she's there there then i will push anyways for then next time i got the idea of how to push it and then i uh pushed better and then she came out um so i think i started pushing good pushing 11 uh, 11 and then she she came like one, around 115 or 120 i do not know exact time and yeah everything else was fine she was healthy and they did two stitches on me um for my second degree tear and then that's about it which i did not feel at all obviously i was under the anesthesia i the same night they shifted me to the front ward i went there thursday evening late evening by the time i got to hospital it was 6 and the by the time i came home it was thursday saturday uh afternoon late afternoon so i stayed there 1.5 day 1.5 days um yeah So because of va- regular norm- normal vaginal delivery they don't make you stay longer. Uh, and yeah, and if you guys have any questions, anything, please feel free to ask regarding labor delivery, labor delivery, anything you want to ask, um clear your doubts, anything. Um feel free to ask right in the comments and I would happily share my experience or suggestions or tips anything. Um uh, so yeah, that's about it guys. Um uh, Take care and have a lovely evening.